Welcome to Antiques Masterclass. I'm Addison Gelpin. Today we've got the enigmatic John Brandler, who's going to be talking about prints. John, thanks a lot for coming in again today. Really Good kind to of you. you. Um, this is a fascinating talk, so uh, tell, tell us more. Well, um, you read a lot uh, about limited edition prints, different types of prints, and um, the marketing behind prints is amazing. And people don't understand what they're buying a lot of the time. People don't understand what is a limited edition. People don't understand what is a real print. Um, There's so many types of prints as well, aren't there? Oh, anything. You know, and... anything. Anything, anything. Um, I had uh, a gentleman in, he came from Florida, and he, he'd had a Salvatore Dali signed limited edition. And it wasn't particularly nice, but it was a Salvatore Dali, and he was telling me it's got to be worth a fortune because the artist is famous and he's signed. Mm. And I explained to him that the artist might be famous, but it was, po paint, it was printed. Uh, when he was just signing blank sheets of paper. And then the printers were adding an image up to the signature. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And it was worth about £200. And he couldn't get his head around that. And I said, well, get in contact with the Dali Foundation. They'll tell you the same. He said, already oh, have. So, but he didn't believe them either. And, but the, the, because of the marketing, people think that anything that is a signed limited edition has got to be valuable. And with this particular gent, what I actually did in the, in the end was I just took a fiver out and said, look, this is signed. Okay, it's a printed signature, but it's signed. We'll go, we'll cover that. It's printed, it's limited edition, and it's numbered. Each one is a unique number. And it's still only worth five pounds. So why, is, why do you think yours is worth so much more? And I, that finally, the penny dropped for him. And he understood. It is funny though, I mean, I do valuations and stuff with my auction game, and I find that if people have got something that's been in the family for a long time, or they've got something that's named by a named artist, they hear about these millions and hundreds of thousands, they want to believe of course. in the, in, in, in the, oh, what's the word? Um, in, hype. Yeah, in the hype. They want to believe in the hype, and, the, and, and in their heart, they believe it's worth a lot more than it is. So. This, I mean, this is typical. This is a Banksy. It's actually a record cover. When he first came to London, EMI, or one of the divisions of EMI, gave him space in a studio, um, an art studio. Uh, a lot of musicians would say it's an art studio. Uh, gave him space in an art studio in exchange for doing some record covers for them. And this is one of them. Um, so he made, <coughs> these, these were printed in, in very small editions because mm. the music is so, so. not my style. Let's put it like that. Okay. okay. The fact that they only made between three and 500, um, they, they made, actually made five images versions of this, four, versions, four or five versions of this. So in total, about 2,000 record covers were made. Which is nothing, really. In five different colorways. But nobody heard of Banksy in those days. But this is a print. It's printed. But nobody really describes it as a print. They describe it as a record cover. But every record cover, every Marmite jar, every newspaper starts off with somebody designing it. Mm -hmm. And then it's printed. So, as I say, this is a Banksy. Banksy then took this image and made it into a silk screen. Some of which are signed, some of which aren't. And he's also done it as a painting, I believe. And he, he the very first version of this was he, he was using as a political statement, and he was spraying it, as opposed to printing it, mm -hmm. but spraying it onto walls all over London. So. You get things that are used for more than one purpose. What sort of money would this be? For this, these, for, uh, th these are unsigned. Okay. Uh, and these are two hundred pounds framed. Okay. So it's a good entry point if you want to start collecting Banksy's. Um, some of Banksy's prints are fifty thousand pounds now. Wow. And there's a, then a dividing line with Banksy where he will do an addition of stencils on canvas. Now, the it's not clicking. There we go. This is another record cover he did. Again, he put it on a canvas. He used it as a record cover. He did. He made the records first. People liked them, and he used. And then very shortly afterwards, he put them onto canvas. Okay. But when he did this and the previous one, his canvases were two to three hundred pounds. They were very little money. Um, this I love. This is just magic. This mm. is Banksy. Um, Time out, at the time of the Haiti floods, Time out said, right, we will do an edition of 5,000. They did them as posters, 
they did them as magazine covers. Mm -hmm. The normal magazine cover, uh, the normal magazine print was 50 or 60, 70,000, whatever it was, sell them all over the world. And um, it has banners on it, it has um, things, uh, one of the other slides has got it with um, a label going across articles inside, barcode for the shopkeepers, course, yeah. everything else, all like that. So they've printed 5,000 posters and 5,000 magazines without that. They were sold and all the money went to Haiti. The problem for the collectors is that if you bought them from Time Out, Time Out's a magazine. Mm. So they took the posters, folded them and put them in the envelope with the... Uh, okay. I was very lucky, I bought some of them direct from, from Time Out and they delivered them to me in a flat, just flat. Fantastic. So, but it's a print, but it's a poster, but it's a limited edition print. So it depends as to how you want to market it and how honest you want to be on the marketing. So I could say there's only 1,500 of them because 3,500 were damaged. Mm -hmm. This is, I, I could advertise there was one, a limited edition of 1,500, but it isn't really. No, it's one of five. And it's not, it wasn't created as a limited edition, it was created as a poster. Yeah. And if you think about it, the Sunday Times is a limited edition because they switch off the presses at some point. They stop printing them. Mm -hmm. And in fact, now, of course, all newspapers are printing a lot less than they used to because the, the online sales are much greater than the printed sales. But they still have to print, probably for legal reasons. So what is a limited edition? There is no, there, there, I don't know of anything that is printed that is an unlimited edition. Because at some point, they stop printing them. Mm -hmm. Pound notes, they've stopped doing. Five pound notes, I think they'll, there you go. Banksy comes to time out. Now, you wouldn't really want to put that on your wall. No. Whereas this one, it's actually a self-portrait, but being Banksy, you can't see his face. That's a very early one by him. But these, these were silk screened. So how, how much is the previous ones going for, the posters now? Uh, 200 pounds. Okay. Um, the, sometimes they go for more charity auctions. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have sold for up to five or six thousand um, pounds. This is a very early one he did. These are silk screened, so you cannot make thousands. Explain what a silk screen a is. Sil the, a silk the... screen is where you, I'm not an artist, so I could be slightly wrong on this, but basically you take a piece of silk, you cover it in, uh, an, an, in an emulsion, I haven't had anything to drink today, <laughs> and then go you- go through, There's some gin there, sir. It's okay. Then very carefully, with a scalpel, you remove part of the gelatin print, the, the gelatin that you've put over the silk. Yeah. You take ink in a liquid form, and just squeeze it out of a tube or a pot, put it at the top of the um, silk screen, which has a, an edge to it, and with a squeegee, force it through. And it'll only go through the areas where you've removed the backing effectively. Okay. So the ink goes through where you want it to, silk screen. Mm -hmm. Obviously with time, some of the holes get worn, the edges of where you've cut it might get worn or torn, um, and the silk might deteriorate slightly. Mm -hmm. So this was an edition of, it was going to be an edition of 100, they actually only printed 92 of them. Okay. And I suspect it was because the silk screen started to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this particular one you can see, he, they had to make one screen for the red, one for the yellow, and one for the black. So it's a three-color silk screen okay. on colored paper. So that, that's, that to me is a real print, where the artist... Let's go back to the beginning. If you think about the first prints that people can buy, they are, you know, there's, there's Dürer, Rembrandt, um, people like that. 16th, 17th century. They did make a few before, but basically 16th, 17th century are the names people will know. The artist took a copper plate, covered it in, in smoke or wax, um, used a needle to make a scratch on it, put it in an acid bath, and where he put it in an acid bath, the acid could eat into where he'd made a scratch and couldn't eat in where it was covered in wax. Take it out, clean it all off, put some ink into it carefully, and they put more ink on wipe it all off so that if you think of that as the, the, scratch. Uh, the scratch, the ink is in here 
and not next to it. And then when they put the paper on and under pressure, that ink goes onto the paper and you take it off. Okay. But as you do that, the edges wear on copper very quickly. 25, maybe 30 is the maximum you'll do. So if you read a catalogue resume of the, the, the reference book of Rembrandt or people like that, they'll say um, the night watchman, first state, second state, third state, fourth, where the artist has had to rework the copper plate each time. Okay. So in my opinion, the best, truest print is where the artist has taken a, a copper plate or a silk screen, but physically done it themselves. Mm -hmm. As they become more famous, they might employ an assistant to do the printing, the grubby bit. Mm -hmm. So that, in my opinion, is a grade two print. And you go all the way through to grade, grade 10 or 12, where it's the Sunday Times magazine. Okay. Of course, the, the, the quality of the printing of the Sunday Times is a, is a million times better than the Rembrandt or the Dura. But there is less artistic input. Um, so, that, so you get all the different grades. I, there's an article I did for one of the newspapers and if you'd like the first couple of hundred people to get in touch with you we can send them a okay. copy of that and they can see all the grades. Okay, that's because I could be here all week telling you the, the different variations and things. Okay. Uh, but keep it simple. So if you when, are interested do email us and they'll be on the front of the website. It'll be on the front of the website. Do email us and we'll send you um, John Brand. Yeah, we'll put a little link. We'll, 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 we'll send it to you. Uh, well, I'll send you the hard copy. I mean, you know, um, the don't need to email us. We'll, we'll put a link at the at the end of okay. the lecture. Okay, perfect. Um, the so when when you see something advertised, the Tate Gallery did it some years ago. They did limited edition. They advertised it as a great investment. Yeah, um, all, all government departments make a profit, don't they? Um, they advertised a great investment. They advertised it as a limited edition set of prints by Turner. Well, Turner didn't photograph them. So first of all, they're not limited edition prints, they're reproductions. There is no other form that this exists in. This only exists in this form. Mm -hmm. Even the record covers that Banksy did, he made them as a record cover, then he, ma he made them into a print, but a different size, and very often with small changes, because he, he matured, he thought, I can do that better if I change this bit on it, or change that bit on it. The, um, so it, it was a limited edition, 5,000, from a photograph of a painting that Turner had done 200 years ago. Of course. So what input has the artist got in it? Now the marketing department is, is fine art, is, 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 there's an art of marketing, but that's not what you're supposed to be buying. No, fair enough. You're supposed to be buying something that you enjoy putting on your wall. And if you want to buy um, a Turner and you don't want to spend half a million or 10 million buying one, buy a really good postcard. The Tate Gallery will sell you a small postcard or a medium-sized postcard or a large postcard. They'll put it on canvas for you. But it has no intrinsic value. It has no long-term potential. It's like yesterday's newspaper. Yeah. It's useful at the time. It's a decorating piece. Um, Ikea are great. They sell canvases, three, four pounds. You can go out, buy them, put them on the wall, they're printed. You'll enjoy it after three, four, five years time, you throw it away and you've lost three or four pounds. But you haven't kidded yourself yeah. that you've got a huge investment potential. Mm. So you've got to be true to what you're looking at. Um, this is by, at the time when he did it, it was, he was Banks' best friend. They've, they've moved apart a bit now. They, in fact, they've both moved to America. And um, this is a man called Ben Ein, and he took the, the conventional idea of a teddy bear. These were... We've got, well, you've got, talked about this in quite length, haven't you, on the previous, yes. our previous lecture that we've done. But and, you know, I, very, I, bright, very bright and, and bright, fun. Bright, cheerful, fun. They're not supposed to be high art. They're supposed to be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And I think that most of the, the real artists want their art to be enjoyable. They don't want it to be um, so pretentious you need an art degree and three bottles of scotch to understand it. It's, do you like it? Do you like the colours? He did this, he did 50 of them in five different colours. So if you like the image, you have the one you want. 
Um, these are all hand colored. So you could technically call it mixed media, you could call it a painting, but it isn't really, is it? Mm. It's a no, print that he has painted. painted. Yeah. You know. um, this is a lithograph. Now, this is one of the mediums I talk about on that sheet. And this is by a, a wonderful artist called Bernard Dunstan, who is a senior oil academician. Uh, he's senior for various reasons, partly age and partly skill. And this is, where you, this is how Toulouse-Lautrec made his prints. I mean, you know, when you think of Toulouse-Lautrec, they're all prints. And Toulouse-Lautrec came up with this, this medium of printing, which was very fast to change, because every, he, was, he was doing the artwork for the Folie Bergère. So every week or every two weeks, there's a new show. So you don't want to do incredibly complicated artwork and then throw it away. Mm -hmm. So he was, he was working on a limestone block. There's a, something special about the chemicals in limestone that allows you to do this. And what you do, you get a limestone block, you draw on it, you then put, uh, with something like charcoal, you then put something on and uh, you put something on and only where you have put the chalk can you then apply ink. So it'll stick to the limestone. Yeah, it's like oil and water, it's that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. One will, one won't. Like, so each colour of this is done on a limestone block and then it is wiped. You cannot reproduce it again. This was an edition of a 200. It's quite fuzzy. Yes, it's, it's probably my photograph as much okay. as anything else. In fact, it is my photograph. Okay. Um, I'm not a great photographer. And um, <laughs> the, you'll see that on some of the other slides as well. But the, it, it, so each colour can be done and you can't go back to it. So it's not like a stencil with Banksy, it's not like um, an what, image where they all... What's the process called again? This is, a, this is a pure lithograph. Okay. Lithography is the, is the process. But this is a real print. This is where the artist did the printing. He, made, he took the limestone block, he drew on it, he printed one colour 200 mm -hmm. times, then he wiped it and printed the next colour. The other one I showed you with the Banksy, he made three different stencils. Mm -hmm. So if one colour hadn't worked, he could have thrown it away and done it again. If one colour doesn't work on this, you throw the whole lot yeah, away. Yeah, of course. And go back to the original concept with the limestone block and draw it. The beauty of this is once it's printed and you clean the limestone block, you can then use the same limestone block for 100 years. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you've got a copper plate and you've etched into it, yeah, you can't out. reuse it. So you get um, Rembrandt and Dura, they both, because copper was very expensive, they both used to use the back of other people's printing plates. Or their printing plates, when they died, were used by other people. They didn't fake from the front, but they just took the copper plate and used the back. So you, this is the, you get, this is um, by another Royal Academician, a man called William Bowyer, Bill Bowyer. He was president of the New English Art Club. He's a senior Royal Academician. This is a print down in Chiswick. This is beautiful. This is yeah. These, these, these prints are seventy-five pounds. The edition was two hundred and fifty. But this is photolithograph. So Bill su oh, s supervised the work, but he didn't do it himself. Okay. So this is a sort of in-betweening, if mm -hmm. you like, number four or five in the in the grading scale. Um, this is a the, the Thames at Chiswick, with one of the islands there, um, and th he did the painting. Then it was photographed, and with offset lithography. So not from a, lith um, a, uh, a limestone block, but mechanically colour separated and then each colour is printed separately. Okay. So at the side of this, on, on the bigger sheet of paper, you get justification marks so yeah. to make sure that they get each colour dead on on the printing. This is um, an etching by um, an artist called Bill Jacklin, who's American. Mm -hmm. This is a fairly one, early one from the 1970s. His original works go for a lot of money, don't they? Sorry? His, original his originals work. go for a great deal of money. Um, he's, he's most famous now for slightly misty, slightly foggy views of New York and London with people moving. It's as if he's photographed people or seen, if you're seeing people from an office block window looking down onto the skating ring outside uh, the Rockefeller Centre or, or Grand Central Station or things like that. He's put himself in an, in an imaginary position looking down, people are moving around, mm -hmm. some are mistier than others. But it's, it's not supposed to be ghostly, it's just supposed to be bad movement, weather, if movement, you like. Movement, yeah, movement, movement, 
things like that. But this is his early work, which I like because it shows the, the, the quality, of, well, a good photograph would, but shows the quality of his control of the medium and the patience to do things almost the same. So you can see he hasn't actually drawn lines and done, done, done the work. He's done it almost the same. So you've got movement in, in the lines. Um, this is another one by him. Again, where you get the graduation. It's very difficult on, on an etching to get a gradual graduation mm -hmm. accurately. It's much easier to do a totally abstract work and nobody can say it's good, it's bad, it's wrong, it's right, because there's nothing to argue. If you look at a Damien Hirst, the, I've got one later on. There's a, you, can't, you, can argue, you can say, I like it or I don't like it, but you can't say the circles are too big, the circles are too small, the spots should be, I don't like the order. It's just colour. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a, a, an impressionist, modern impressionist one by a chap called Bill West. Again, photo litho, I think. Um, could be wrong, but I think it's photo litho. And it was uh, done as a fundraiser for um, to stop people killing whales. Okay. Um, again, it's fairly abstract. You could, if you're looking at that, you could actually hang it almost any way up you like. Mm -hmm. um, once once you see the title, it makes sense. But it it, it could be anything. But it, I like it. A lot of artists get involved with charity work. A lot of the time, because charities think it doesn't cost them anything to to give a week of their time. Well, you try saying that to a solicitor or an accountant. Mm. Um, but anyway, so, so Bill did this some years ago to, to help Wales. And that's a photolithograph, yes. one, yeah. yeah. Well, so we'll, we'll stop there for okay. part one. That's really kind, that's John. Um, part two, ladies and gentlemen, will be continuing straight after this video. So thank you very much for your time. If you've, got, if you've got another 20 minutes, half an hour, then carry on watching. We'll see you in a second. Thank you so much. Thank you, John.